And so I emphasize to my geriatric patients particularly, aging does not equate with low energy. Low energy is an illness that can be treated as you age. You don't have to have less energy because you're older. Second primary brain malfunction is brain energy disorders. Brain energy disorders are incredibly common in our country, very, very common in the elderly. One of the things I have to ask my elderly patients, hey, how's your energy? Most of them will say, oh, my energy is really good. And I can look at them and look at their face and see they don't have proper brain energy. One of the things about the brain is that it energizes our face. So we send brain energy to our face and it gives us our facial tone. If you've ever seen a person with a stroke where their face sags, the reason their face sags, there's nothing wrong with the face. The reason their face sags is because there's no energy getting from the dead brain, which is what a stroke is, to the face. And therefore, they lose their tone, particularly right in here, they lose their tone. And the reason, again, for that is the brain energizes their face. So I can look at a person when I walk them off, I can tell if they have good brain energy. Now look at these two faces. As you can see, the one face, the cheek lift is gone. The face is like sagging. Your face is supposed to be like a triangle with the tip of the triangle at the bottom going out, not more the top to bottom going out. And you can see this dramatically sometimes in the hospital with patients, that a person has, will have very flat cheeks, no cheek tone whatsoever, and then after 14 days, 10, 14 days of treatment for their chemical depression, their face goes whoom, straight up. And literally, they'll lose half of their wrinkles in this part of the face, and the cheeks will start popping out. So you can look at the mirror at yourself and you can see if you have good facial tone. If you don't have good cheek lift here, there's a good chance you have a chemical depression. Now one of the problems with brain energy disorders, and the most common by far is a chemical depression, one of the problems is, is we name these neurological diseases, these chemical diseases with psychological terms. Most of my patients who have chemical depressions are not emotionally depressed. And let me say that again. Most of my patients who have chemical depressions are not emotionally depressed. Let me give you an example of a guy I met a long time ago in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He heard me on the radio, I was doing my show, and I said the same thing I said about sleep. If you're not sleeping all night, waking up fresh, if you wake up during the night, then your brain isn't working the best it can. And he comes into my office and he's, and he's sitting there smiling, just happy as can be, and I said, well, what can I do for you? He says, well, I heard you on the radio and I wasn't sleeping like you said I should be sleeping, so I figured I'd get my brain checked out. I said, well, how's your energy? Energy's great. I, I run every day, work out, weight lift three times a week. I play golf every week. I play tennis. And he says, you know, I read books all the time. My concentration's good. I mean, he literally said, you know, he's 70 years old. Kind of like he was a pretty healthy brain to me, but he wasn't sleeping. So I put him on this medicine, not a sleeping pill. When it comes to sleep, the medicines have to be at least brain energy neutral. A lot of the, the sleeping pills, the traditional ones that you see, lower brain energy to put you to sleep. So they actually cause chemical depressions. I put him on a medicine that would help him sleep, that would raise his brain energy at the same time. Came back a week later, he was, I was slowly going up on the medicine. Came back, we got, he's sleeping a little bit, not good, so we upped it a little more. Came back two weeks later, sits down in my office, and this is a true story, and he starts crying. And I said, Joe, why are you crying? He said, I never thought I'd feel this good again. I haven't felt this good in 20 years. Now this guy was not emotionally depressed when he came to see me. He was feeling good. He just wasn't feeling as good as he could. And so I emphasize to my geriatric patients particularly, aging does not equate with low energy. Low energy is an illness that can be treated as you age. You don't have to have less energy because you're older. And it's very common as we lose brain cells. Again, as we age, we lose brain cells. By the time you're 70, you may have lost 20% of your brain mass or your volume. And so as you lose brain cells, your brain becomes more fragile and it's susceptible to a lot of experiences. And one of them is low energy, but that is a reversible condition. The other common form of low of brain energy issue as far as brain energy disorder is what we call, call bipolar disorder. And I'm not gonna to touch on this a lot. It's not very common in the elderly, but it's basically a disease where the brain gets too much energy. The brain gets manic. It's like flying with energy. And what's fascinating about this illness is a couple things. One of it, it is overdiagnosed all the time. All the time. And I won't get into why, but I can just tell you. Bipolar disorder, again, is not an emotional illness. It's not an illness of mood swings. 
I have, for every 10 people that walk in my office have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, eight of them are not. They're getting diagnosed because they scream, they yell, they have mood swings throughout the day. That's not bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is someone's had a manic episode. And a manic episode is where your brain gets so high the person will talk nonstop, nonstop talk. They, they, might, they might get really lay on irritable, but it lasts over time. They won't need to sleep for three or four days and they'll have good energy. And the early parts, they feel really good. As it gets worse and worse, they can feel really bad. That's bipolar disorder. That's a true manic episode. So bipolar, though, however, does not occur very often in the elderly. When I get someone comes to me and they have their first manic episode and they're over 50, I start thinking about something else going on, a brain tumor or some other kind of illness going on, some kind of drug something, because it's just very uncommon. The third thing I'll touch on as far as brain energy disorders, and this doesn't, obviously doesn't apply much to elderly, is attention deficit disorder. What's ironic about this, I'm gonna say a little bit, is that kids are hyperactive because part of their brain is low on energy. I talk about basically three energy sources in the brain. You have your core energy that gives energy to your entire nervous system throughout your body. You have your frontal lobe energy that gives that the front of the brain which controls the core energy. And then you have your emotional energy. So with children with ADD, they have too low of energy in their brain even though they're hyperactive. It's an irony. Because what they have is they have appropriate emotional energy, they have appropriate core energy, but they don't have the frontal lobe energy to control their emotional energy and their core energy. Therefore, the medications that actually help them raise frontal brain energy. We have a similar issue sometimes with Alzheimer's patients. When they start having problems controlling their emotions, perceiving reality, getting agitated, the problem is they've lost cells in the front of the brain. That's the part of the brain we control our emotions with and that's part of the brain we control our core energy. They've also lost some energy in the front of the brain. So some of the medications that I actually use to treat children with attention deficit disorder, I also use in patients with Alzheimer's disease. So when you're talking about brain energy, you're talking about a chemical depression, that means your core energy is too low, you don't have the energy to do things, enjoy things, so on. Or you can have a core energy that's too high, which is mania or bipolar disorder. Or you can have specifically low frontal brain energy, which happens in ADD and Alzheimer's. The thing I want to emphasize about brain energy again is that it's not an emotional thing. One of the problems I have with my field is started as a psychological field labeling brain problems with psychological terms. So when I give my patient something for brain energy, it's classified as an antidepressant. And I can't tell you how many of my patients say, why are you giving me an antidepressant when I'm not depressed? And I say, because I'm not saying you're depressed, I'm saying you're chemically depressed, you're chemically low. And so I wish they would change the terminology, but they haven't up to this point. So you can take an antidepressant, not because you're mostly sad, but because you don't have proper brain energy. And I am convinced, I'm totally convinced with Alzheimer's disease, that every person with Alzheimer's disease should be on a medicine that raises brain energy. Because not only does it give them more energy to think, to remember, to function, it also appears that antidepressants, ones that raise brain energy, are actually neurotrophic. They have help regenerate nerves and keep your nerves alive longer and healthier longer.